Hi guys, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get colors just like this in Lightroom. Now, before we get into the tutorial, I want to let you guys know that this video was sponsored by Squarespace. So if you're looking for a domain, a website, or an online store, you should definitely check them out. They have 24-hour customer service. They have amazing, easy-to-use templates, and they have an all-in-one platform, so you never have to install, patch, or update anything. I currently use it for my website and for my online store, and I absolutely love it. So definitely go check it out. I have a 10% off code. It's Jessica. So you can use that to get 10% off your first purchase. I'm going to have a link in the description. So if anything, try out the trial and let me know what you think of it. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how to get these colors in Lightroom. So let's begin. So what you're seeing now is hopefully going to be the final product. I'm going to show you guys how I did that. And I've also applied this to other photos so you guys can see the differences. Just a quick disclaimer that these kind of colors are not going to work with every type of photo and every type of lighting situation. Like if you use this on a photo that you took with some greenery, it's not going to look anything like this. All right, so first things first, I do want to toggle the temperature but I'm not going to do that just yet. I want to see how the colors are turning out and then we'll go back to that. Right now, I'm going to higher the exposure or increase the exposure by going up to about 35. And then what I want to do is just decrease the contrast. Now, again, we can always go and adjust this midway if you don't, if you want to change it to fit your picture. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just lower the highlights very slightly. And then as far as shadows go, I do want to bump this up all the way. And the next thing I want to do is pull up the blacks to about 35. So this is how it's looking so far. And then clarity, let's bump that up to about 19. Okay, so the vibrance, saturation, what I have written down here is negative nine. Okay, that's close enough. I'm not, not gonna be exact here. Saturation, let's bump that up to about 10. Now the curves are always tricky for me to redo them exactly how I have them. So I'm gonna, tr hopefully it looks somewhat like what I had down. So that looks, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So that's what we got so far. So we're going to go from RGB to red. I'm just going to pull this up here. Honestly, how I get these colors, I just play around with it a lot. And you can play around with cur curves forever, to be honest with you. I mean, you could be there all day. And you might want to like take a break, eat some cereal, go back outside, and come back to it. Because your eyes are going to get tired of doing this. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just lower that very slightly. I want a little bit of that red to peek through. So as you can see, as I'm lifting it very slightly, you can see that red is now showing through some of the black. So that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, let's go on over to the green tab. I'm just gonna bring that down. And I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna keep adjusting the colors and seeing how this goes. So that is before and that's after. <laughs> this is like the worst curves I've ever made. What is going on here? Okay. That looks decent. Like decent is good enough for me. You know what I mean? Like it looks, you can present this in front of like two people. More than that, probably not. But there we go. And then we're going to go from green to blue. Blue is my absolute favorite. I love playing with the blue curves. I really could be I really could spend half of my life here. Like, oh, what have you been doing this summer? Oh, just, you know, playing with curves. <laughs> just, you know, pulling up the points on my curves layer. No one everyone's going to think I'm weird, but they already think I'm weird. So, okay. So, this one's kind of like a little dipper kind of thing. Anyone who knows anything about astrology, please don't roast me. I'm probably not 100% correct about that, but it's kind of looking like a dip, some kind of dipper here. Like a hand trying to get cereal. I don't, 
I don't know, kind of looks like a hand. Okay, so that's not looking like what I had in the picture. So then I know I really messed up. Okay, let's try to... Now I'm just going to freestyle this. Now we're trying to get it back. Okay, so... We're going to keep it like this and see, see where it goes. Um, but as you can see, it added in a lot of color. It's filling in the white with a lot of yellow. And it's just looking a lot more colorful. So then what we're going to do is go on over to the color tab here, the hue saturation, luminance tab. And for this one, what we're going to do is bump up the hue. As you can see, when you slide this back and forth, you know, obviously this is red. It's affecting those red colors. And I'll show you guys that you can play around with this all day to kind of subtract and add what colors you like. If you know you have a theme and you want to keep only certain colors, this is definitely a very helpful tab for that. Personally for me, I, I just kind of post whatever I like and I don't like to limit myself to a theme in terms of color, but I know some people do like it and it helps them stay consistent. So it just depends on how, how how consistent you want to be like nothing in my life is consistent so so then luminance we're gonna take it up to about 31 and then we're gonna go on over to the yellow tab and this is one of my favorite ones because i feel like it makes such a huge difference in the picture so for instance i'm sliding that back and forth and that's kind of what i did to create certain looks i just see what I like and you know after you use it for a while you kind of know what each thing does so it's a little bit easier but it's all about practice you guys so then I'm going to go on over to the blue tab and we're going to bump up that saturation so right now it's looking pretty good we have a lot of nice colors in there that have been added I'm going to go on over to the highlights and shadows so the highlights the saturation I selected was 59 and then the color honestly you guys personal preference again but for this certain look i chose 237 and then what i did was went on over to the shadows and then i chose 34 whatever that's close enough and then i bumped up the saturation so i guess it's just adding in color that was never there. So now that we finished with the shadows and the highlights, I'm gonna skip on over to the calibration. So for the shadows, I'm going to bump this up all the way to 100. And as far as the red primary goes, again, same thing, 100. And then saturation, I also wanna bump that up. I'm just trying to get as many saturated colors as possible. And then as far as the green goes, also bumping that up. I think the rest of it is, you know, aside from the blue primary, everything's going to be 100. And then this is going to be desaturated. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It looks, it doesn't look that great, let's be honest here. <laughs> Anyone who's like, oh, that's great. No, <laughs> you don't have to be polite. Okay, so temperature, we're going to go back to that. And what we want to do is toggle this until you see it kind of changing. And as you can see, it's coming back with some really nice colors. So I think what I had was right about here. Let me see, let me check my uh, notebook here. Yep, pretty close, yeah. Two, four, five, six. This is pretty close to what I had it previously. So when you do something like this with a lot of colors, you're going to have to adjust the temperature to each photo. So if I was to apply this to another picture, it's probably gonna look crazy. But again, it is important to toggle the temperatures to adjust to that photo, the lighting situation. So that's really what is going to kind of mold the colors to the photo. You can also toggle the tint as well. Um, I do that for some pictures. If it's not adjusting properly, it doesn't look very nice. So that's just another option. So as far as the saturation goes, it is looking a little bit too much on the face. So there are a couple of things you can do. You can lower the saturation on the entire photo, bring in a mask, and just 
have the mask saturated for the background only. Another thing you can do is go on over to that orange tab and you can adjust accordingly to the saturation and the luminance. That will definitely help. Bumping up the exposure as well, changing the hue, just kind of play around with it a little. And also you can toggle with that yellow and brighten up the luminance, but it really does depend on the lighting of the photo. So after we adjust the temperature, what I wanted to do quickly is make any small adjustments. I'm noticing a couple of things. So what I did is just went to the green tab on the tone curve and I just want to fix that. I think there's a little bit too much showing through and I'm just kind of fixing that, adjusting cer certain things. This is what I would normally do for my photos. I'll just go back and change the entire thing. Spend another five hours on here. So, I mean, if I just, if I keep doing that, I'll be here for a while, but I'm just making a little bit of refinements and I encourage you guys to do the same whenever you do finish editing a photo, take a break, come back and look at it with fresh eyes so you can make adjustments without having looked at it for six hours straight. And then the last one is the blue. I just wanted to fix that up just a little bit. And now that we've changed the temperature, you can go back. Just going through and seeing if anything really needs changes. Another cool thing is you can bump up the saturation for the blue. As you can see, it has a huge impact on the photo. Okay, so those are just the small refinements that I would, that I would make. And also one thing I forgot to mention is the balance tab over here between the highlights and the shadows. I'm going to bump that up to about 21. I think that makes it look a little bit better. I think really the highlights and the shadows, you can transform the entire picture just by playing with these, changing the colors. So for instance, I'll show you real quick. I changed this over to a green color and I changed the shadows and the whole entire photo changes. So there are a lot of different options that you have depending on your style as a photographer, the colors that you like. So definitely play with the highlights and the shadows. I would recommend colors like these for night photography. I think it works really well and I find it to be easier to apply colors like this for photos like that. So that is the end of the video. I'm gonna show you a last before and after. So that is before and that's after. So yeah, we're just bringing in a lot of colors that were never there before. I really hope you guys like this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.